Hi, Eric. Hello. You get the gold star for the first commissioner here. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I would have been here a few minutes earlier, except my WebEx decided it wanted to update. So <laughs> I've been in that position for sure. Uh, hello. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> we can be like Seinfeld with Newman. <laughs> <laughs> Lopez. <laughs> Pull up some of the stuff that was sent for the packet here. And once the work wait, once the work day is done, I change straight to like home clothes. <laughs> Maybe I should not do that next time. <laughs> that is, that's how I live my life. Yeah. Is in, like, I put this on this morning, and this is what I'm wearing now. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. Well, this is a cute little portal. How long should we wait for other people to get here? Um, we could give them a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I do know uh, Dan Cairo is not going to be able to join us today because he is on a flight. We're okay. going to email him the link to the YouTube recording so he can listen to the discussion and be caught up for the next meeting. Cool. So we, we do have five, make that six commissioners. So we do have a quorum. Um, but there's two more we're expecting. Yeah, give another minute or two, that's for sure. Cold in my basement. <clears throat> Let's see. Might as well just begin. Who who makes that decision? So, council chair, that is uh, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's begin. We don't have any public comments um, from the commission at this point, right? As far as like, I'm assuming that everybody has pulled up the HTML agenda. I'm just kind of going going through like A, B, C, D. Uh, Call to order, take my gavel, welcome everybody. And then um, <laughs> going to the uh, public comment, I don't think that there are any comments currently because we haven't even talked about any of the maps that people have submitted so far, the commission has submitted so far. So I can kind of skip over that. Um, Mr. Chair, I don't, I think you're right, but 
Taylor, the meeting host, can can you confirm there's no one here yeah. from the public to speak? That is correct. There's no one here from the public. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to jump the gun. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> So the next part of this is now going to be the approval of minutes. I don't know if you guys have looked at the minutes beforehand. And I guess this is kind of a tacit approval where we kind of go forward and if nobody has any objections, we, we kind of go on or do I need to actually call a formal vote? Uh, it helps for the record uh, if you can vote. Okay. Um, you can just do a, a thumbs up and then if anyone is voting no, we can uh, verbalize that for the record. Uh, and if, if anyone hasn't seen the minutes, I mean, we can take another week so you have time to look at it and do it at the next meeting. It's just up to the commission. So, first of all, let me ask this question before we, we move on. Has everybody seen the previous meetings minutes where we went over an induction and so forth and so on? Okay, that's, that's all a nodded yes. Second. Does everybody approve of the last meeting's minutes from February 24th? Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to go to D of reports of the working group members, and we're going to talk about the chair and vice chair redistricting maps. And to be clear here, um, Eric Kenny, vice chair, has already submitted four maps. He's rocking and rolling. And Eric, would you like to go ahead and present the maps that you have? Sure. Um, they are in the packet, um, yes. but let me go ahead and open up District Builder and um, why? Okay, this is, <laughs> there it is. Okay, I'm like, this Zoom control thing doesn't actually move. So, okay. Um, a little bit about me before I came, you know, before I started working in tech, I actually was a map maker for 10 years. So I've done geographic information systems from the like early 2000s to like 2012 when I, when I moved over to tech and nonprofit and doing some other stuff. So I was really excited to get a hold of some of the maps that, um, and some of these mapping tools. So I came through and um, so I'm going to show you sort of a couple that I have. Um, so this one is um, very similar to our existing maps. Um, biggest changes are here in District 5 where it would include all of the granary. So it would come up to 4th South with some jogging around some of the the downtown blocks, but also including all of the Fair Park Council District, um, Community Council District inside of District 2. So District 2 would, would encompass that entire Community Council. Um, so those were the, the biggest changes on this one. But then I thought, as I was, as I was drawing around these, I thought, what if we redrew the entire, like, what if we redrew the entire downtown in a way that um, sort of makes the districts a little more cohesive in what I think of the neighborhoods? Because right now I'm in District 5. My district also includes 9th and 9th and some of the, like, uh, areas over on 13th East. And, and honestly, my neighborhood has very little, my neighborhood in the ballpark have very little to do with some of those east side neighborhoods. But I have a lot more in common with like the Marmalade and some of the west side downtown neighborhoods, you know, where the, those, uh, the France, the, the France apartments that are being demolished and, you know, some of that stuff. So I came up with this. Um, Quick right. question for you in the yeah. packet. Is that related to draft 2? Um, let me so the see first you showed was that related to draft 1 just to be kind of clear if people aren't looking in. in let me pull up those. Let me see what the. Um, let's see here. Packet. Okay. Oh, I do, I do have it. Open. Okay, so. First one I 
did. So if you're looking at, okay, ah, okay, there we go. All right. So the. Mr. Chair, this is Cindy Lou. I'm the. Yeah, student hello. I, per I just helped with the packet and I wonder if I could um, help out with just some of the naming convention we started. Okay. Yeah, please. Purposes of consistency there. Um, what we did was the seven or the six featured maps that are on the district builder website were given a number by the city recorder office. And that number is listed on the Excel spreadsheet and it aligns with those that uh, Mr. Kenny, sorry, that you listed. So on the left in the second column, and I'm pulling it up on my screen as well so that I can just give you the numbers and corresponding with what's being shared on the screen. Okay. So we'll do yeah. a little bit differently to when we create the PDFs, we we intended to put the names of those maps on the actual PDF file. So we'll work to improve that. It's we just recognize that District Builder is a very friendly space to see things and the information that's being provided, but we cannot change the names on District Builder. So if you have suggestions, we are open to receive them and I will follow along with what you're sharing on District Builder and try to identify the one that you got up. Um, so I can rename them, right? Yes. So I could come in here and I could rename like by maps. Does, does this move? As far as I know, uh, you can. Okay. But I, I think it, it's up to you on how the time wants to be managed. I just wanted to share that we are open to suggestions and how we can make this work okay. better. We recognize that there are a lot of maps that you'll be looking at. Yeah. I appreciate that. Now, is there, um, is there something that I can like reach out to you as we're making maps and and like if I need to rename them, I can get a number from you. Absolutely. Okay, cool. That's what I'll do in the future then. Thank you for that clarification. That really helps. Yeah. Um, so. Going back here, so this is this is kind of. The. Huh? interesting, I'm. Thinking through how to like reshape the district boundary. So it's like district one is entirely the west side. Again, I'm keeping Fair Park sort of in its own district. This would be the new district two. And the numbers, I don't, you know, I don't have we don't have to stick with the numbers of where they are, but like this would be district five. So it includes Capitol Hill, some of the marmalade, all of the west areas of the city of downtown. And all the way down to the ballpark. So this is the freeway here. Um, this is the river. And then it would stop at essentially State Street for the southern portion. Go over to fourth east up to I think this is fourth south. And this is draft two, by the way, for people who are following along. This is the map that that's referring to. Um, and then district three would be the northeastern portion of downtown as well as the avenues up here. And then district four would just be like south of Central City. This is like six south. And then the ninth and ninth district, the Liberty Park, Liberty Wells area. And then six and seven are fairly similar um, with the exception of this notch here, which I pulled out, uh, which is all university housing. I thought maybe that makes more sense to put those in with the university district rather than in three or four or one of the others. Um, so then I modified this one a little bit, which was this draft 5. This 1 is also listed as draft 5. My guess is, um, and I should have truncated a little bit. And switch the numbers around. So, so yeah, I'll here. just mention draft 5 in your PDF files is RD 2022 04. Okay. If you're looking at the PDF. Um. So District 2 would only go out to 5600 West, south of the freeway, include Poplar Grove, Glendale, and the Fair Park. District 4 would come just south, so it would be um, 
300 north. So instead of going all the way up to Beck Street, it would be 300 north south, sort of dogging around some of these neighborhoods up here in the avenues, and then be this, this, this longer area. District 5 would move east. And then um, again, these and the other two, the other two are, are basically the same. There's no difference on those. So those are my those are my ideas. The other the other ones that I have in here, like district like um, draft two, is most of these are very similar to sort of that first one I showed you. It's you know a little tweaking on the edge, like this one. I moved district two to the north side of the west side, and um, didn't include the granary district. So they were just a little tweaks on some of the edges. But for the most part, these are very similar. Um, and you can kind of look at the PDFs uh, for more, more information on that if you'd like. And then, um, you know, open it up to questions, comments, concerns. That was pretty rapid fire. I don't know if I have any questions at this moment. <laughs> What were some of the reigning concerns as you were making these maps that you were considering as you were kind of drawing them out and trying to like adjudicate where to put actual like boundaries around? Um, so I was, you know, I, I mean, I was, I wasn't born here in Salt Lake City, but I was raised in Murray. Um, and, you know, I've lived up here since 2018. So I like have a pretty good sense of, of how the city is laid out. And I was thinking about some of the, like some of the natural barriers that exist, the freeway, the rivers, the um, on one of my maps, I have City Creek going up here as the barrier. So it's like one side of the river versus the other. Um, that got a little complicated right in this like upper A Street, East Capitol area, because it's like that runs right through the middle of a neighborhood. So it's kind of like you kind of have to shift that a bit. But that was kind of, and I was kind of thinking of consistency of neighborhood flavor you know as, as i was like as i drive up third west from my apartment to like the freeway or up to into downtown you know i see a lot of apartments i see a lot of multi-dwelling units i see a lot of homelessness frankly you know in this this neighborhood and i'm not saying that like district four or five whatever we end up naming this district should be the sort of sole brunt of that but it is it is something that we have to consider. We have to be aware of that. And, you know, on my street alone, I have $600,000 apartments, apartment condos, literally across the street. And then behind me, I have um, uh, a motel that is like, like a single resident occupancy motel within 100 feet of each other. That's, and that's the disparity of, of this neighborhood. And that is unique in a way to this area, this, you know, this sort of downtown area, this isn't, that isn't so common over here, or it isn't so common over here. And then thinking about the cultural significance of these neighborhoods over here and making sure that those are, you know, that those are together um, just for that nature. So that's, those are the kind of stuff that I, Yeah, the the con like they're contiguous, but they're not very. Some of these aren't very compact, and part of that is is like we have these weird undulations down here. So like if you look at the compactness of District Seven, like twenty nine percent, that's really low. Um, but District Four is almost fifty percent compact, and that's you know that's actually higher than what we have presently for that district. And then five is sixty nine percent. So that's you know really high, but a lot of the compactness really goes down to the fact that we live along mountains and we have rivers and we have, you know, crazy shaped, um, crazy shaped features that sort of block the things. And that's, those are some of the things that I was thinking about is, is, is the compactness in the sense of what is the general feel of the neighborhood and of the district rather than of the straight lines along these streets. Any questions from any other members of the commission? Or comments? 
I'm so I'm in the like funny sliver up between I-15 and kind of Beck Street. Mm -hmm. And up here. um yeah, that goofy one. And yeah. we have like I when I moved here, I thought we were part of the district one. Mm -hmm. Um but like the growth dynamics going on here and in the areas just south are super different. Um, and I don't know, I mean, that shouldn't be the only thing that's impacting it, but, um, I think, I think there's kind of what you were saying. There's some different concerns. Um, yeah. but it's also like, we don't fit in anywhere because <laughs> right. I don't know that we totally fit in with like the big avenues district either. Right. Um, but like walking my dog, I'm not going to walk at least across six north like my uh -huh. neighborhood is is east um but yeah i don't know we're like the one weirdo we also get kind of uh i'm represented by like todd while well i was i'm not sure who my person is now but like we just get a funny cut all the time yeah, um, yeah. but i don't it's know how to rectify that so yeah, it's a tough, you know, and, and that's one of those things. It's one of these block groups, these census block groups. That's actually a little weird because you have a fairly significant population in there. I mean, this this whole sliver right here is six is like 600 people. And with growth potential, because I know that there's some some development that's happening up there. So it's kind of like, well, you know. Do you fit more in with the west side that's sort of growing in a different way? Do you fit more with this sort of uh, uh, marmalade district? Like where, like where do you fit in? And, and yeah, you're right. It is a tough. There's a couple of these these sort of weird areas that are kind of tough to to differentiate where they should where they should fall for that exact reason. And, and I don't, too. don't have a good. I don't have a good like, you know. Pan panacea to fix everything. <laughs> so I also consider too that there is some underrepresentation possibly within the census on the west side and yeah. within groups like that. And also trying to consider as well as I'm looking at doing maps, saying like we have a huge maybe like kid population now of like 14 to 16 year olds, but within a five five year time span. Those are going to be voting members as well, and that kind of shifts my perception. It's all to kind of say, like, there's a lot to consider. <laughs> yeah, and there is, you know, and it's it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's as you consider that, and you particularly consider the 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 socioeconomic aspects of particularly Latino families. You have multi generational families living under the same house. You have grandma and grandpa, and you have. You know, you have mom and dad and you have kids and you might have 3 or 4 generations living in a single house. And so you're right that that yeah, the 15 year olds now going to be voting in 3 years. And, you know, like the change of population of what that that looks like and and the the issues that are important. Yeah, I really like as kind of a baseline the way that you had talked about, and it's something definitely to consider um, landscape features that kind of shape the way that we either group or create density in certain mm -hmm. in certain pockets. So that's something also to consider as people are looking at doing that. Yeah, and I, you know, and I really tried to get like I was really trying to heavily rely on the river to create some of this these west side districts, but there are just too many people living in between the river and the freeway that you can't make a single district just up the river. Like I was, I was like, oh, we'll do one sort of west of the river and we'll do two between the river and the freeway. And then we'll start, you know, sort of splitting up the, the, the east side of downtown. And it just, you can't, like there are just too many people, particularly in this area, there are just too many people um, to be able to, to have that as an option. Very true. Any other comments or questions for Eric or just about the, his thought process in general or, or how he's considered things? And you can tell me like, this sucks. Like, I don't ever want to see this map again. Like, I will not be hurt. Um, 
um, you know, it just, it just, I was kind of, as I was thinking about it and I'm like, what kind of makes the most sense to me? <laughs> I have to say that it's pretty impressive. I'm kind of like in awe of how you can do this at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> You should see my He's had several years of experience. <laughs> yeah. You should see my master's thesis thesis. It's 70 pages of these, you know, similar maps. <laughs> I guess a question maybe for Ben. So one of the concepts is like keeping the core of the district intact. Is there kind of a measure for what that would be? Or is it like if we eyeball it and it looks like there's some similarity to what it had been in the past, does that work? That's a good question. Uh, if I was to play devil's advocate on this map, yeah, I, I would say the two kind of like concerns that could be raised are the guiding principle you just referenced, maintaining the cores of prior districts. Um, you could make an argument that some of the districts here don't do that as well as other districts. There, there's no like specific way to measure it. Uh, I, I do want to point out in the lower left hand corner the reference layers, which Kenny already turned or excuse me, Eric Kenny already turned on. It's really helpful to toggle that on and off so you yeah. can compare what the changes are to the current boundaries. So if any commissioner hasn't noticed that, it can be your best friend when you're working on these maps. Uh, the other potential concern would be the compactness, um, particularly around the, the fair park area. Um, those would be, if I'm playing devil's advocate, the two concerns I'd point out. I, I do think when it comes to the core areas, there's room for interpretation. I mean, district four, is the core area of district for the downtown, which is more of that Western central area of the district, or is it just the opposite? Um, later on, we'll get to a map showing the changes from the last redistricting, which kind of informs a little bit of what is the core of a district, um, but I'll save that for later. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate that. And that's why that's why sort of my earlier drafts of the map map really were just sort of like nibbling at the edges of the district. And this was really kind of a thought experiment that I came up with of the idea of like, let's redraw these three districts sort of kind of in their entirety and make them, you know, let's shift them around a little bit so they're a little more um cohesiveness cohesive in the way that I think of these of these areas rather than what they currently are. And you're right, the Fair Park district, um, you know, it follows the river. It's it's you know major streets up here and down here and then the freeway. You're right. It is a little funky and I was I was but I was being very considerate of that particular neighborhood council and trying to because I think right now they're in three districts. I think the fair park spans like three districts. And so I was like Correct. being considered of that of trying to like so they're represented represented solely by one district rather than you know and getting their their interests spread across three different places. So yes, I understand that those, you know, th that that and those those are something that I am aware of as I was as I was building these. Yeah, there's a ton to consider when doing this and it could get paralyzing, but don't let it stop you from making more maps. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I love this tool. Like I I mean, if you if you go look at my if you just go look at my list here, like these are all the maps that I have made. <laughs> I've even gone through and just like selecting block groups and not even being considerate of where things fall. Like <laughs> Any other comments? This has been really helpful and thank you again for for sharing Eric and kind of stepping through your thought process and, and going through how you kind of thought through 
um, your considerations as you were like nibbling on the edges or, or considering other factors. Yeah. Do you mind if I just make a comment? This is Sidney yeah, again. I just wanted to reference Eric's uh, comment about the number of maps. So on the district builder website, we place the ones that are highlighted in yellow on your Excel sheet in a featured position. Mm -hmm. But you can view all of the maps and all of the users that have submitted map maps. And that's what we wanted to provide to you was the variety that had been submitted already. So that's just and where do we access that? Like under my organization? Yeah. So go ahead to Salt Lake City redistricting. Okay. And then, so the featured ones are the ones that we highlighted. Go ahead and scroll up to the top. Okay. okay. Yeah. It might be just an admin space. I apologize. Oh, okay. So the Excel sheet will list the ones that are dated from the Excel sheet, which is in the packet. And so mm -hmm. it's a PDF file, but um, it will list the map creator and then it will provide a hyperlink to the other to their map as well the proposed one and i'll go through um i'll go through and i'll rename all of my maps to map to match the name that's on the excel spreadsheet um once i'm done sharing my screen and we're you know moving to other things i can i can sort of do that in the background but they'll yeah. if you want to see my map name it'll be it'll match what's on that excel spreadsheet thank you Thanks for the clarification, Cindy Lou. I appreciate that. I like that the comments trickle in. Anybody else have any other commentary or questions for Eric or the maps or about thinking through your own maps or anything like that? I have another question about the Excel sheet. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, if there is nothing in the columns to the right does that mean it's incomplete like some of them have population in the columns this is a great question and it is one that we are looking we we are also learning district builder okay <laughs> so ben may actually have an answer to that i know that we are trying to coordinate with our maps uh maps leadership, whatever we can best call them, our map experts, to better identify what the best information is that we can put on that Excel spreadsheet, because we do recognize that it is quite a lot of information. If you want us to provide specific information and maybe reduce the amount of content across, we're happy to change that. And just so this was 15 days of data. And the next one will just be seven days. So we are going to pull it by blocks of time between your meetings. But we're really, I mean, I feel encouraged that we are seeing the numbers that we're seeing. But if you have specific data that you want to see on the Excel spreadsheet, and I will just come, I'll get an expert from the map situation and figure out what everything is on the right when it is blank. What does that cause? Then I'm not familiar I'm, with well, it. We yeah, I'm just. Seeing. I'm just curious if it's like they gave up on their strategy or something. And so it's like, they didn't actually complete it. That's more what I'm wondering, but I'll, I can go click through more of them to get a better understanding. I don't, I don't have an answer. It's a good question. I suspect it might be related to, they either didn't click the evaluate button or it like, they didn't, they didn't trigger those numbers. So if you click the link, like you can go and look at it, but it may not have been pulled with the rest of the data because it wasn't triggered yet. But that's just a suspicion. We're still looking into it. Yeah, because I like, I mean, when I built my maps, I ran them through the evaluator and stuff. So I bet I, you know, so like I had those considerations when I was looking at them, but I don't know if that meant once your people when they pull these maps for PDFs if they didn't uh, do that as well. And that may be a step that could be pursued either in the instruction or in the preparation prior to packet so that the data on the Excel sheet is clear. So evaluating, again, we'll confirm with the map experts and return to you. I'm wondering, if uh, as we look at these maps 
when we represent a particular area of the city, uh, if we are looking at able to see what Eric has thought about in terms of what he perceives as being um, neighborhood contiguousy, contiguous to the core of a particular council that he's assigned. So I represent District 6, for instance, mm -hmm. and um, in any of the maps that I have seen, we haven't changed much. We've just snatched that little piece out mm -hmm. to make the line straight, um, giving, um, adding more to District 6 by taking that little notch out uh, along 13th East. Right. And <clears throat> so uh, as, as we who are not as expert as Eric at making maps or looking at maps, um, I wanted to and did what I could to, to figure out the actual street names. Um, that was difficult for me to know just to see the line. I had to get so close to some of the maps and to find out the exact street names because I who live here no places by street names rather than just a general area outline. Right. And maybe other members of the commission would find the ability to identify street names within the confines of these drawings would be helpful. Yeah, within, I mean, so within District Builder, itself like the pdfs you're right um it makes it difficult as you're looking through the pdfs if you're in district builder itself you can actually zoom in like let me share my screen again um let's see where did my where did this go okay share chrome so like you can you know you can sort of have the the bigger map but then if you use this tool down here you can like go in pretty close. So you don't, you don't have to like strain your eyes, but like I could, you can come along here and be like, okay, this is, you know, Sunnyside and 13th East, here's Night South, Michigan. Um, yeah. Now that in relationship to the boundary lines that were, that are in place now, and then to be able to knowing the street names change the boundary yeah so if you if you're in district if you're like looking at my map and you come in here and you turn on this city council district's current it overlays this blue yes this blue is great those are the existing boundaries right so yeah. you can you can kind of see like okay well here is that area that got cut out so you could come down right. here and be like so that's 13th south over to whatever this is it's Emerson. Yeah. Um, and up to 16th Emerson. Then it has a little notch in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when I was, when I was talking to someone a few weeks ago about this, I was like, what's up with this little district notch? And I guess it was designed in the 2010 census. No, the 20, maybe the 2000 census. Um, cause yes. that's where the council member lived. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, you know, her exception <laughs> to keep her in the district. <laughs> right. So that's, it's just to make it easy. I don't know how the others are. I just need to see. And maybe I just don't know how to work the builder well enough yet to be able to see the present with the possible future with the names. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're in here, so if you go in here and you create, you can actually, you click this new map, um, Salt Lake redistricting, and it'll give you the current district. So you can use this template. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've, I've tried that. Okay. And, and 
what I'm trying to deal with. Uh, I just wondered if anyone else had the same um, challenges, I guess. I've if, done what Eric has done when I've looked. I haven't actually like create, create now, but like it helps to have a scroll wheel and to use the template that Eric is showing and then kind of be like, okay, I'm going to start expanding or decreasing mm -hmm. the actual boundary line and see what happens with that. Yeah, and, and you know, and you've got this hover, so you can kind of see what the population is off of the thing. If you switch between these blocks and block group up here, so block groups are these big black lines. Um, they're de deemed by the uh, U.S. Census. And then these blocks are the smaller components of these. You can still see the block groups with it, but the individual blocks have these sort of grayish line. And if you hover over, you can get the population as deemed by the 2020 census. Um, what's in this little thing? And so that's that was kind of the things that I was thinking about. Is I tried to be when I that was the other thing as I was thinking about for the most part is thinking about block groups. And only splitting those up if I absolutely had to, like showing you, let me go back to this, um, like to this one here. I think that's the one. Um, and I, if I were to click on evaluate, you can see, so it's got equal population, continuity seven, seven, compactness is 40% overall, two out of the seven are majority minority, and then I've got three block groups split. So I've got this one here. Um, there's a, if I zoom in here real quick, you can see that six north actually splits this block group um, that this weird sliver up here, because it actually goes down here to fourth north or fifth north, whatever it is. And then this one here is split. Um, again, population sort of dictated that. And then we have this weird, if you actually look like the block group is like all of immigration Canyon. Well, immigration Canyon is actually in summit County. So it expands. That's why you get these. So the, these two here are the same block group as this one up here. <laughs> so that's just like one of those. It's like, okay, that, you know, you're nothing you can do to, 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 to not split those. Um, <clears throat> but I did try to like, mitigate as many else as I could. And I was able to get it down to just a couple, usually on each map, I was able to get it to two, maybe four um, block group splits. That was super helpful for you to explain. Thank you, Eric, for showing that. And I'll just add, uh, and, and any commissioner, if you want some time with staff, uh, Hassan and I to walk through district builder or ask us questions, just let us know. We'll find I it. Tried. I tried today three times, maybe only two. And I could not get any help. So I need it. I, I will admit. I think I can understand if I get help. I just can't at this point make it work. I can draw my own maps and I got what I needed for <clears throat> District 6 and its variations with District 7 and District 5. Uh, but I wondered if other people <clears throat> needed some additional help. I will be happy to receive it if I can figure out how to get to you. <laughs> we'll reach out after this meeting, Anne. Uh to find a better time then. Terrific. Well, this has been a really great discussion. Any other commentary or questions that you have about what was shown? I, I'm, I'm wondering the little black box that you went around with, it automatically uh, gives us the ratios of um, ethnicities and um, population yep as it goes about yep uh, so that if so that each of your maps 
whichever one you chose, which is the last one, seems to be the one we've been working the most with, um, would give you the population of each of them as you had drawn them. Yeah. Okay. And that's automatic. Yeah. Yep, it's automatic. It's all it's all calculated in as you as you draw the maps and and so the um, so like you know I can hover over here and you can see that it's got the white is twenty five percent of the population. Let me get one that actually is a real number. So it's like population eleven one thousand one hundred sixty one, which is this block right there that's highlighted. And you can see it's 38% white, 2% black, 3% Asian, 50% Hispanic identified, 5% native, and 5% Pacific Islander. And that's only that one block of right. that particular district. Yeah. And so over here, you can see the, um, the breakdown for the district as a whole. So if you, if you, like, I can see that I have in district one, I have delegated 28,480, which is off by 51 from the ideal, you know, perfect number. So it's, it's 51 less than what the ideal number is, which is well within that 5% plus or minus. And then if you hover over this little graph, it'll give you the, of that 28,480, 36% are white, 6% mm -hmm. are black. Yeah. And that's all the way down. So you can see it's right. like, you know, District 2, 46% Hispanic. District 1, 45% Hispanic. Of course, there, there aren't ways to equalize the ethnicities mm -hmm. um, because we don't have people of some districts don't have a lot of ethnic differences living in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like your district in particular, like if we look at six, it's 78% right. white, you know, not much we can do about that. <laughs> right. Unless we did a lot of really making the maps different. Long, yeah. long and skinny, which they did not recommend. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, like, Part of the consideration, one one out of many considerations that you, you have as you start to draw these maps is ethnicity. And then there's like neighborhood cultural boundaries and right. like Eric said, natural boundaries, stuff like that. So you have a lot of ways that you can slice and dice this for sure. Yeah. And you know, and I think one of the most important thing is 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 as you're as as you're drawing these is to be considerate of the areas that are majority minority, particularly, you know, and, and you think about it, that's going to be the West side. Um, the way Salt Lake is, is really dictated is it's really going to be the West side and this sort of area down here in the ballpark um, in Central Night. Um, as long as you're not like splitting these areas up, so you're lessening the impact of those minority majority neighborhoods, that's going to be what's important. And that's why I think each of us as commissioners know our areas better uh -huh. than I I do not know District 1 or District 2 nearly as well as I know District 7 and 6 and 5 and mm -hmm. 3. Um, so I think we don't necessarily need to rearrange each other's but we need to do what we can to consider what would be best for each of our districts. Absolutely. And put them together. Yeah. And I think it's also important to kind of call out that everybody is representing a particular district and it lean on your fellow commissioners, I guess, is what I would, mm -hmm. I would say. You know, I'm I'm going ahead and representing district one, um, but I know district two very, very well. And similarly, I don't know the east side that well, but I would definitely lean on you, Anne, when I have questions about like if this looks correct and how this plays out, because you have an intimacy with those district areas that I just don't particularly 
Right. So I, it's a matter of sharing information among the commissioners. And I don't know how to do that virtually. Your questions help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and bringing these know, up is definitely beneficial for sure. Right, and you know, and that's that's part of the reason why we have this this map builder with these with these links is you know like I can come in, and if you came in and you built a map, I could go in and I could click on your map and I could duplicate it, and use your the map that you created. And the same thing for you, you could come in and click duplicate on my map, and then you could start tinkering around with your district to sort of shift those boundaries in a way that makes sense for your for yours. Okay, I'm going to learn. Okay. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and uh, I have a question. It, is it correct that you you like the idea of getting rid of that notch in between District 5 and District 6? Um, it, it, did I hear that correctly? No, I don't believe I said that. I just said on every map I saw, it had been zapped. Mm -hmm. um, I have enjoyed in the 20 years that we've had the two districts represented, uh, the fact that we did have representation from both the, the two different councils. But I definitely understand that logically, um, <laughs> it may not be as necessary and would benefit others if we were able to shift the numbers and it helped to shift the numbers so that other districts had the ability to be more uh, compact. Um, it's okay. But I, I personally, I have enjoyed the opportunity to have representations. So I think that's exactly the kind of feedback that's helpful is to share mm -hmm. your local district perspective and recognizing that there are pros and cons to moving it or keeping it. So that's helpful. I know, like, you, you probably noticed as you were looking through the maps as kind of a corollary to what Ben is talking about. In District 2, at the way it's kind of originally drawn, it seems like a lot of land mass. But if you were actually to look at the maps, most of that is industrial space. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you see District 2 being so huge is because there's not a lot of population density. And we're trying to kind of cover for that as well. So. Mm -hmm. Just kind of something to note about that. <laughs> I was wondering if I could ask. So, Anne, um, I totally understand your your point about having two reps at like a community council meeting or something. And um, I think that's something that <clears throat> in District Two we also have that opportunity, which I do think is a nice opportunity. But something that I've heard over on the west side of Salt Lake is confusion from residents about who is their representative and um, because across the street has a different rep than they have or something like that. And so I'm just wondering if you've encountered that um, with your little notch that is happening in your district. Like, has it caught, has it resulted in confusion when it comes? Yeah. yeah. A little bit, but most of the people who participate recognize that they just get to vote in a different district, but they still come to the council and they've been on the council. So that we've had members of the Wasatch Hollow Community Council, which is not represented on the maps right now. Um, who live in district 5 and also who live in district 6. So, some of us get to vote for 1. And some of us get to vote for another one. <laughs> and that right. gives us the opportunity to talk about different council persons, even though we don't have a lot of participation in community events between the two districts. 
it's kind of like 13th East aces you. You're above 13th or you're below 13th. And those are what? Historical boundaries? They're, sort of <laughs> they're nothing. They just are. Yeah. And it, within our own council, we have 15th East dividing us. Well, I Those thought it was the whole 15th piece, you know. I, I thought that was the fault line. Oh, it is the fault line. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Uh -huh. I'll have to remember that when I become anxious or critical. <laughs> yeah, what Marty is saying plays out, especially in, in like Fair Park, where it's straddling three different districts. And then the community council, which sees themselves as one contiguous whole, then has to span a lot of like those kind of political political moments. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's helpful. Uh, in some areas, it's helpful to be to know just you have one. And I think it's hard on the council persons um, because they want to attend. We've had recently, they just attend one every other month. And that is helpful for them because they have a lot of responsibility and a lot of councils to attend. We have to think of it on from many angles. And we've had comment, I'm, I'm not the chair anymore and that somehow this slipped through the cracks as we changed chairs that we also got aced as a community council. Maybe we'll get back on the map. We do exist and we <laughs> are there, but it just didn't get registered appropriately. Oh, huh, interesting. I do want to share a, a clarification on the reference layer on district builder for the community councils. Anne's correct. There are, I think, five community councils that did not renew their registration with the city. But the layer on district builder is from the end of last year. So the the five or so community councils that did not renew registration, I think downtown is another one. They are shown on the community council layer. Uh, the reason we went with that is we know, given the pandemic and the times we're in, there could be delays in renewing registration. And each of those community councils has been around for several years, if not a couple decades. So since they've self-identified in the past, we thought it was important to include them in that layer. Well, I looked for us. I thought we weren't there. But anyway. I know we're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the boundary. So the, I mean, if I turn on the community council boundaries, um, I'll throw up in my um, map again. So the um, <laughs> community council boundaries, like not the city council boundaries, but the community council. So it comes down. Um, looks it, like it is listed. we are like, listed in whatever map you're looking at. Yeah. So the, is this a community council? So the 13th east to 17th south to 19th yes. east up to 1300 okay. south mm -hmm. we're very square okay yeah so it's there and um you know that was well, it I is think, on this map yeah uh, i don't know if i ever saw this map so I, well i didn't have this layer turned on so it wouldn't have shown uh -huh. okay. yes so that Maybe was I that was the issue is is that i just was showing count the council boundaries you know, the proposed council boundaries and not the actual community councils. Right. But yeah, that that is an option that I can turn on. And so it's like you've got East Liberty here and Central City Wells, Central Ninth, Ballpark, the Granary, you know. So yep. those are available to turn on. I just didn't have them turned on. Not because I was trying to hide anything, but because it adds a lot of extra lines that make can make the 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 maps a little more confusing. I I 
that's one extra layer to kind of think about because I've also tried to keep as I've looked around and uh, I've trusted stuff, but haven't committed anything about keeping community about uh, community council within mandate that we have kind of together because I know mm -hmm. that can cause a lot of confusion and anxiety with people. Especially if you have a district where you have people moving in and out. Mm -hmm. Um, yep, <laughs> and wanting to become involved and not knowing that makes it a little more difficult. Yeah, the west side is definitely experiencing that if we think about the shift as people are buying starter homes and as population growth is pursuing, the west side is really starting to see that upheaval and shift in, in population growth. So, what's going on? We have it at the opposite end. Those <laughs> passing away. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get some of us youngsters to move over to the east side. <laughs> and stay. Yeah. You know, Got to make it affordable for us to live over there. That's the problem. <laughs> now, now, who's in charge of that? Yeah, that's <laughs> not us. That is above my pay grade. <laughs> Yeah, any other comments from any of the other commissioners? It's been really great discussion about trying to conceptualize ways of looking at these maps, interacting with them, and starting to kind of recreate some of these boundaries. Going once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> it's not an auction. <laughs> But if nobody has anything else to say, and if you have wit of the staircase later, of course, like there, there's email and we can communicate with each other there. Um, the next item on the list is the pending and unfinished business. And obviously, because this is the second commission meeting, we don't have any unfinished business. So I'm thinking we can we can move on ahead. Am I correct in that, Ben? I don't want to like overstep kind of acknowledge. You're correct. Me. It it may be helpful to list some of these maps under that section of the agenda to continue discussing next time, because that's really the section of the agenda where we'll put the maps to try to narrow it down to a list to focus on in the next few meetings. Perfect. Um, now on to section F for those that are following along at home on the agenda, new business. So we're gonna be going over the dynamic map showing changes from the last redistricting and Eric has kind of showed a little bit of that. We're going to go over Council District 4 current boundaries and minimal change map. We're going to go over District Builder, kind of giving an overview of that. And then finally, that spreadsheet that uh, Cindy Lewis kind of pointed out um, before. So, Ben, are you going to do that part of this? Or? Yep, those are all me. Hey, look, over to you. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Hey, Ben, before you start, I'm just wondering, I think um, you probably already approved minutes and I did have, I was late to the meeting. I'm so sorry. Um, I did have 1 clear 1 edit that was needed. That I spotted, so I don't know if it's appropriate to do it now at the end email you just wanted to get that out before I forgot. I'm okay with this, Ben, if you want to get it recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. The only thing it is very small is on the introductions for. Under me, so this is Marty Wolford. It said that I was active in the 2010 census and it just needs to be updated to 2020. That's all. Yeah. We will definitely change that. Thank you. Thank you. And just as a record clarification, if everyone could demonstrate thumbs up if you are agree in agreement with that change, then we'll just consider those approved as well. Thank you. I like this thumbs up thing. I hope more meetings are like this. So we also accept a little piece of paper with the word yes on it. If you wanted to hold that up. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a little piece of paper with Benjamin's on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll take one of those. No, just. <laughs> All right. So dynamic map. What happened with redistricting? last time. So I'm going to quickly screen share a PDF, which is in the meeting packet today, but then I'm going to take you to the interactive map on uh, online, which has a lot more detail. 
but we wanted to have something in the meeting packet, which is why we have the PDF. Okay. Can everyone see the, the map on the screen? Yes. Yes. All right. So in blue is the old, the old lines. And these are from 2001, as it shows in the lower left. And the red lines are the last redistricting, which are also the current boundaries that we're talking about changing. Now, since this is a PDF, there's not a ton of detail as you zoom into it, which is why there's a link in the lower right-hand corner over here. And this link will take you to an online version of this map where you can zoom in and really look at what changed block by block. So let me switch to that online map. So if you click the link in the lower right-hand corner of the PDF, this is where it will take you. And again, it's the same color coding as it shows on the left. Red are the current boundaries from the last redistricting, and blue are the boundaries from the redistricting 20 years ago. So if you zoom in, you can start to see a lot more details. For example, in District 4, there was this little notch that was added between 4th West and 5th West and North Temple and South Temple. And then in the opposite corner, you can see there was a little notch that was added where District 5 comes in. So it's much more helpful to be on the interactive version where you can zoom in to see these details. And some of the other changes were where District 1 and District 2 meet. So this notch was there 20 years ago, and in the last redistricting, it got a little bit wider. And then similar to what Eric was doing, the Jordan River Trail was used for the redistricting, but then they moved it down to North Temple. And further west, the other change they made is they went from North Temple down and they just used I-80 for more of the boundary between one and two. Is there ever any commentary on why certain notches were created or thought processes behind widening or closing notches? Um, I, and the reason why I bring this up is after hearing that someone had put a notch to keep them within a particular council district, that kind of peculiarity is of interest to me, just so that I know I'm not like doing something against like, oh, this is the way that uh, culturally, ethnically, or whatever have you, we have kind of thought through this stuff like that. So, as was mentioned before, the Wasatch Hollow notch was a council member's residence. The, the notches over here by North Temple, I haven't come across a reason why yet. So I've been listening to the advisory commission meetings from 10 years ago, and I still have their last meeting I need to listen to. And then they did have a final report but it, it didn't specify why they changed every individual boundary. So we're still digging and I'm hoping to get some more information for the next meeting on that question. Uh, further follow up question here. When we talk about what we're doing is an expectation that we should be providing that kind of clarity for 10 years from now into the future. So, yes, uh, more immediately, I think the council members will ask. So it's helpful to say, this is, you know, a particular reason why this line is proposed to be here instead of say two blocks over. Um, it's helpful to have that. And sometimes it's obvious, maybe it's a physical barrier that exists and it's, you know, that should be the boundary, or it could be something like, uh, 
what Eric was saying earlier, that this neighborhood has much more in common with this other neighborhood, and this commission wanted those commonalities to be shared in the same district. So it's gonna be case by case. There's no right answer to use the same technique on every boundary. It's just having that uh, reasoning for each location. And that's what we as staff are gonna to try to record and put together when we bring this to the council. Thumbs up. I also thought it was helpful to point out when, when you're looking at what changed last time, you know, zooming out, looking at the big picture, it's not huge changes. They're, they're definitely clustered where districts one, two, three, and four come together. And then again, you see this cluster where districts four, five, and six touch. But it wasn't a wholesale, you know, let's move more than half of the district into a different district. Um, so that was the magnitude of change 10 years ago. I thought it was helpful to keep that in mind. And this commission, you can certainly recommend if you have, you know, three maps and one of them is more of a minimal change, one of them is more major changes to give the council those options. You can certainly do that. That's good, good to know. Were there any other questions on uh, this interactive map comparing the last two sets of district boundaries before I go to the next item? I can't see everyone, so just jump in if you do have a question. I think we're good. So the next one I wanted to show you is, this is a map that one of the city GIS uh, professionals shared. And the, the strategy was, what are the fewest changes possible in order to meet the minimum requirements for redistricting? So this would be like the fewest possible changes you could come up with. And it's focused on District 4, and I was surprised how few the changes were. And we're calling it the, the minimal change map for obvious reasons. So the, there's only two changes. And those changes are moving the southern boundary of District 4 up to 800 south and then shifting the western boundary from I-15 over to 500 west. And that's it. It was, it was very minimal. And you could argue that maybe the boundaries should be shifted from 8th eight, south to 7th south or from 5th west to 4th west in order to balance some of the other considerations more, uh, whether it's the community council boundaries or wanting to balance some of the other demographic features or the development patterns and the housing that exists there. Um, but we wanted to show you this example for you can just make a few slight changes and still be meeting the requirements of redistricting. Um, so on this, so this, this new map here is shifts enough population in and out of all of the other districts to make like, like that's it. Is that what yeah, you're saying? That's what, he's, that's what he told me. And okay. one of the things that's helpful, um, and this is actually a recommendation from the last redistricting 10 years ago, is when you're building your maps, sometimes it's helpful to start with the district that needs to shrink. Mm -hmm. Because by shrinking the district that's too big, you free up space to add to districts that are too small. And there's no right way to do it, but that's one strategy um, that's been helpful. Interesting. Yeah, I like that approach a lot because then it gives you more of a canvas to 
to see what to do with it because you're focusing on like, hey, this definitely does need to shrink versus, hey, I'm adjusting council district two or one and now I need to find another like Rob Paul to pay Peter type thing. Hmm. Um, there are two other things I wanted to share tonight. Um, I'm going to show the restricting hub real quick, and then the spreadsheet that we've talked about earlier. Ben, is that minimal map available for us to click through as a featured map on the dynamic side? Because it, it's blowing my mind right now that that's like, I, I just want to see how everything played out. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll double check with the, um, the GIS staffer who came up with it, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said is this is like the bare minimum to make the, the numbers work. Not that less is better. It's just an option. And I think it is listed on the Excel sheet, but I can't, I don't think we changed the name to call it out. But I do know the PDF is in the packet and let me find out which of the links in the spreadsheet it is. So you can go and look at it on District Builder where it is more interactive and you can zoom in and out. So on the redistricting hub, this is our website where it's all things redistricting in one place. So you scroll down from the top where it's got the photo of City Hall and under the district builder section, there is now a YouTube video and this is a tutorial. I think it's 13 minutes long and it walks you through all of the basic features you need to know with District Builder. So this is a good place to start if you're not feeling comfortable and still have questions. Um, I, I've watched it and there were a couple things that I know I'd been told before and I'd forgotten. So it's a handy reminder if you just wanna get a refresh on the, the user interface, because there are a couple things that might not be immediately obvious, like, I know some people, when they're building their maps, they don't know to click the evaluate bu button in the upper right corner. And then once you realize it's there, it's obvious. But until you, until you realize it, you don't quite register it. Other information that we've added is this getting started with District Builder. It's a tutorial, but instead of a video, it's step-by-step -step instructions in a text layout with images of what you would be clicking on. So if you prefer the video, if you prefer more of a manual approach, both options are there for you. And then we have the recognized community councils list. Um, and this is the, the one from the end of last year. So if a, dis, if a community council did not renew they are still gonna be shown on this list because we went with the one from the end of last calendar year. But it's not, we're not there. I looked at it. So and I'm just. Go ahead, Cindy Lou. I was just gonna check the link and provide the one from last year if the link is going directly to our updated list. Um, oh, that could be. It is. Yeah. So I'm happy to provide the link to the former for the December information. So changing that link will make sure it has the same uh, information as the reference layer you can turn on and off in District Builder. The one we looked at earlier that does show uh, Wasatch Hollow as one of the community councils. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Uh, this third link is the one we looked at a little earlier showing the boundary changes uh, between the 2001 and the 2011 redistricting. And then this is the link that'll take you directly to that interactive map 
uh, where you can zoom in and out so you're not stuck with just the PDF uh, details. And then the last thing I want to show is the Excel sheet. So there is a lot of information on the Excel sheet, but I think one of the most important things is we wanted to make sure that all of the maps that are submitted you have access to. And you can access them by clicking the URL. So it'll the cursor should change into a little little hand to click to go directly to that map. And as Cynthia mentioned earlier, we're gonna provide a new list as the new maps come in for your next meeting. So all of the maps will be available to you as well as members of the public so you can see any of the maps that have been submitted. And we, we have a, a naming convention where we are trying to give each of the maps a unique number. So if in the future we're referring to a map, it'll have this unique identifier. So we will have that as a tool to say, wait, which map are we talking about? And then we'll have the specific map number in order to clarify that. And we're going to come back about why some of these cells on the right are blank, because we definitely want to fill in all of that to the extent we can. And I'm thinking it would also be a good idea to change this compactness column to a percentage. When this says 0 0.22 blah blah blah, it's 22% compactness. And I think that would be more helpful if we can identify the percentage next time. Why didn't we see any of Neil Vandermost's maps? So his maps, I know they're part way down the list, are right here. They have great titles. <laughs> really do. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh when I see this PDF because I had no idea those titles were going to be shared with the group. It was just for myself. <laughs> I actually think those are more helpful than our uh, our RD2255. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate those titles, Neil. <laughs> Especially about a map that cares about my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, the, the map three moves 900 south, 100 south, I-15 is actually not very different than that minimal change map. I naturally gravitated towards the move to change the district length from 900 south to 800 south. I thought that was actually a really clever way to stabilize the population between group uh, district four and district five. I didn't think about the Western boundary though. I did it a little differently on that map, but that's a really clever way to do it too. If you look at the community councils downtown, their boundary, it looks like goes to I-15. So it's like, if you're considering the community councils, it's part of your calculus, then you wouldn't want to move that um western boundary so it's just what what gets included in the calculus i guess that has been my biggest hang up is like every time i'm doing a map and i'm like oh i'm about to submit i'm like ah i'm shortchanging this thing that i really care about Oof. Nothing is perfect is what I have to remember for myself. <laughs> In any event, I'm, I'm happy to talk about some of my maps. I think the maps provided by Eric Kenny is a great place to start. And I really appreciate that that sort of uh, was a great way to, to begin the conversation and to really discuss sort of how to use the uh, district builder tool properly. I had no idea about some of those overlays, so I found it very um, very, uh, very educational to, to, to see some of those maps. 
Neil, can I put you down to to present some of your maps for for next time as well, and whatever maps in between here and the next time that we meet? Um, and you can pick a handful if you don't want to present all of them. Um, just <laughs> because I'm sure you, like myself, have kind of spawned some ideas about this. So I, I would love to to hear more about some of the the members here who are making maps and kind of get your thoughts on it, especially after Eric has kind of kicked us off with that. Absolutely. I'll pick two or three that I sort of feel the most strongly about and, and I'll be ready for them. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That kind of also begs the question a little bit. Would anybody else like to be on the agenda for next meeting to, to talk through either some of the maps that are on this spreadsheet? Um, I know I recognize some of the names like Alejandro Pugh, Haley Leak, other people. Um, if they're looking through them to kind of either advocate or talk through how they're looking at these maps or would like to present maps that they're going to be making in preparation for next meeting, just so that we can start kind of getting the conversation rolling about your thought process, how you viewed some of this and some of the concerns that you've kind of come through. Well, not everybody rush at once and don't feel like you need to say yes now um, <laughs> as we get prepared for the next meeting. If you would like to, and it's like 2 or 3 days out, just let us know. And I would love to get somebody on. I'd love to get more people on the agenda. <laughs> Didn't mean to put everybody on the hot seat to say, yeah, sure. I'm going to, I'm going to come in and talk about maps. <laughs> and thank you again, Neil, for your willingness to present. I really appreciate that. From a, an agenda timing perspective, we're trying to publish the information at least two days in advance. So it would, it would be easiest if uh, you do have a map that you wanna talk about next time, if you can let us know um, like next Tuesday morning, then we can make sure it's included in the packet that's put out for the public. Can you remind us, is there a place where you can see each of the community council boundaries on their own? Because in that whole like central ninth Liberty Wells, Liberty Park, there's so many overlapping lines that I don't know which one goes with which title. And if I'm trying to pay attention to that, I want to have a legend. Well, the link that then, if you don't mind, I'll jump in the link that we discussed in the on the front page. That will go to the community council district does have like okay, a directional boundary line. For the community councils, there's also additional maps on data.slc.gov. Okay, thank you. Would you say that again? Where of these course. maps are, of course. Uh, so the PDF sheet that just lists all of the recognized community organizations with their boundaries is on the website, the tiny URL SLC redistricting that Ben showed. But then there is, a, I think I'm looking at, yeah, nine maps available for zooming in and out and seeing different layers at the website data, D-A-T-A dot SLC. Dot G O B. Right. And I believe that that one will have like the boundaries of the community council. And they will, as far as I know, they would be the, mirrored with what's on the district builder, as I don't know that they've been updated just yet to reflect the registration changes. On that well, data data map thing too, because I've seen a map of this in the PDF format. There's like a color coded pencil, like current boundaries thing. We'll follow up with an email to all the commissioners with these links, so you're not trying to read your quickly written links. <laughs>
anybody have any last comments or questions before we adjourn? Making that as a no. Ben, do I need to do any like formal ritual to adjourn this? Like spin three times, say something like. <laughs> I, I heard it's good luck if you do, but it's not required. You have to do a headstand. Um, like, so, you know, it can't be done unless you can stand without any assistance on your head. Yeah. <laughs> well, with that, I bid you guys adieu. This is adjourned. Thank you for coming. <laughs> we'll see you um, next time. Ben, oh, how sorry. do I get in touch with you? Uh, and if you want to stay on this video meeting, we can talk after everyone signs out. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you all. Yeah. Bye bye. Taylor, has the recording stopped?